my check. Hopefully the audio sounds good. I'm in a spot to put my water so I don't block everything. Hello, hello, hello. So I've got a very kind of new um, setup here. So if you see me staring slightly off to the right, it's because I've got a monitor right there with chat and stuff. So camera, camera right. Um, then I've got my laptop and stuff set up over here. But um, yeah, Renovic, the interesting thing with YouTube is that if you stream or upload at a higher bit rate, um, excuse me, at a higher resolution, it'll end up giving you a higher bit rate and much better quality. So kind of a trick people use is to um, take their 1080p stream and upscale it to 4K or 1440p, and then even 1080p and 720p end up looking a whole lot better. But um, yeah, thanks for hopping into the stream. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, let me know how the mic sounds. I'm using the new DJI mic, which a lot of people are using Nero and some other folks. And then um, let me know if the music is audible and if it's too loud. Um, I do have a little bit of an agenda today. So this is meant to basically um, kick off the live stream um, series, I guess. So we're going to be um, unboxing and building the LDO um, Voron V0.2 S1 kit um, is what they refer to it. Okay, music seems fine. I've also got the... Um, Uh, where did I put it? I can put your guys' chat up on screen too so you guys know when I'm talking to you. There we go. Music seems fine. Um, so I'll, I'll throw up the chat I'm referring to if I'm answering any questions or just chatting with folks. But um, yeah, so we want to introduce this build series. Um, this kit has been provided by Matter Hackers uh, for the purpose of just kind of creating content around it, they didn't say they specifically wanted a review. They didn't really give me like a time frame. They just said, hey, we want people to know that we're selling these LDO kits and um, they wanted to support the channel. So I do have links to this and some other um, Matter Hackers links. I've used them to buy a lot of filament. I've actually got one, a couple of their refills here. I really like companies that are starting to produce these refills so I don't have to deal with the empty spools when I'm at the end, just a little bit of kind of hard corrugated cardboard, which is nice. Um, but I've bought a lot of hot ends from them and uh, like all the V6s I used to use, I bought from them. And then I bought a Dragonfly BMO and a Dragonfly BMS from them and then a Fetus Rapido as well. Um, and a great thing about them is that they have free shipping inside of the US. So um, pretty much anything you buy, I think qualifies for the free shipping. And then you actually get rewards back for the stuff you buy. So if you're constantly buying refills of filament, um, you are gonna kind of stack up rewards and by the time you buy like three or four, your next spools are gonna be almost free. So that's kind of uh, some cool things about Matter Hackers. Plus they're supporting myself and some other makers. So um, if you guys choose to go ahead and check out the links in the description, um, go check out their products, see what they have to offer and support the companies that are supporting the people who make content. So um, yeah, uh, that's the relationship with Matter Hackers. No, Money has been exchanged or anything like that. Standard YouTube kind of, um, you know, disclaimer. My plan is to build the kit as close to stock as possible. Um, kind of go over some of the thoughts I have. I've, of course, built a FormBot V0.2 uh, very, very recently. So, you know, I don't want this stream to be like, what's the difference between this? What's the difference between that? And which one is better, like, completely? I'll, of course, bring that stuff up when I notice it. Uh, but it's gonna be kind of me trying to look at this kit in a, I won't say a vacuum, but in of itself. And then at the end, when I do the review, I will do more comparisons. So I will answer questions if anybody has a, a specific question about the difference between this kit and the FormBot kit. Um, but yeah, you know, LDO is regarded very, very highly and the kind of DIY 3D printer maker realm. Um, got their shirt that I picked up at Murph, got to meet Jason. Um, I had met him before, but since I started kind of building Vorons and um, streaming some of this 3D printing stuff, I hadn't really talked to him. So that was really, really nice. Uh, their kits are very highly regarded and considered some of the best on the market. 
and literally having set the standard. Um, I think when a lot of the initial kits came out for Vorons, they weren't a very high quality and LDO kind of stepped it up. They talked with the actual Voron team to kind of make sure that their bombs are really, really good, which is great to see. And Jason is just awesome. Um, they of course produce uh, motors and other components for companies like Prusa and other kind of OEM manufacturers. So uh, yeah, let's see, what else do I have? Um, the plan for this stream is to unbox this kit, kind of talk about some of its components, its merits, why it costs more than some of the other kits on the market. Um, I'll leave it up to you guys to decide whether or not the increased price is worth it for kind of the features, but then do a little bit of organization and planning for the stream series and build um, I've already got all my printed parts kind of printed out up here and I'll talk about that process. Also have some um, kind of cool little extras that we will probably be throwing on the build. But um, yeah, does anybody have any specific questions about the kit? I guess I can go ahead and switch to um, the desktop view and we can look at the actual listing um, from Matter Hackers. So, if you guys aren't familiar with Matter Hackers, their site is matterhackers.com. Link in the description. So uh, this is actually sold out at the moment. Um, it is on pre-order and they expect to have stock on the 4th. So um, yeah, just be aware of that. If you go to check it out tonight, it may, might not have it. They also have other warm printers. They have a uh, 2.4 kit and they also have a Trident kit. So. The Trident's kind of the next thing on my list that I really want to um, kind of get involved in, with and possibly build. But uh, yeah, so you can look and see some of the options. Um, depending on where you buy the LDO kit, there are different authorized I mean, if, um, vendors or distributors. Uh, they have different options with them and that's kind of up to the, the vendor from what I can see. So uh, frame color, they only offer black right now from Matter Hackers. Uh, so that's something to be aware of. Uh, for a single board computer, by default, it does not come with a board, but you can add a Pi 4 for $45. Um, and then for printed parts, you can, of course, self-source them. They're not gonna come from um, Matter Hackers, or you can buy their ABS parts for $70. So uh, there we go. That's an appropriate question there from Renovic. Oh, I gotta talk, um, toggle these windows. Uh, did I print the parts myself this time or buy them? I printed them all myself. So I printed them on the FormBot V0. So that'll give you an idea of the quality of the FormBot kit, um, I guess, in, in, in some regards. But a Voron printing of Voron seemed to be the most appropriate thing. I do have a, uh, a Prusa MKS 3 Plus or MK3 Plus, something like that, that I have enclosed or partially enclosed and I can print some ABS parts on, but it seemed appropriate to print ABS part. So the filament I use, I guess we can go over that real quick. It's these four. And let's switch to the overhead. So um, we chose all um, poly lights from Poly Maker for this kit. Uh, so if you can't tell, um, we're going for a little bit of a Halo or Master Chief theme. So a lot of the base color is going to be this Army Green and ASA, um, you know, which is a, a weather resistant ABS. This isn't the right one. That's PLA. Where's the box for the... I think it's out in the hallway. But um, yeah, just ignore that this one says ABS or PLA and know that I actually used ABS and that... Um, <laughs> Not PLA for building a boron. Um, so it's going to have a base green. Um, some of the accent colors are going to be the um, uh, galaxy black and galaxy dark gray. Again, both in ABS. And then a, a few other highlight colors or accent colors are going to be in this gold. So the theme, the goal is to kind of look like Master Chief in a little bit of some regard. I don't know. I uh, kind of built the FormBot V0 with PIF parts. So, um, you know, that was basic uh, black color with some type of accent. And so for this one, I wanted to go for something a little bit cooler, I guess. Um, that extra camera's not doing anything for you guys. So let me turn it off. But um, yeah, so let's look at some of the parts. Uh, the quality I'm fairly happy with. 
I, I've done a little bit more tuning since I printed these to get the, the printer looking a little bit better. Um, prints looking a little bit better, but you can see we've got the light galaxy gray, then we've got the galaxy black. All right, he, oh, no, that's not black. Galaxy black right here. So I'm actually probably gonna be asking you guys your opinion for some of the color kind of combinations. Um, I've been seeing a lot of really, really cool printers being built by guys like um, uh, Zombie, uh, Hedgehog, and Mandic really, and they use really, really good color combinations. I don't think my color um, combinations are all that good, but um, we're gonna try. We're gonna try to make something a little bit cooler than the kind of standard two color Voron, so. Um, let's see. Printed my Trident parts on an Ender 3 V2 with a box over it. This is the way, uh, the Finch, yeah. Um, whatever you gotta do to get those first prints. And then once you have the printer working, you know, you can um, you can easily, you know, get the prints uh, reprinted if you need to. Um, and then there's also the, the PIF program. That's how I got my parts originally was with the CPIF program from Fabrico. But this time we had a Voron that easily printed ABS so I'm happy to say um, this Voron will be have, have been printed on a Voron. If you guys want to see any more of the parts, let me know. But um, one cool thing I did manage to do was play around with uh, Mandic Reilly's mesh plates, uh, the kind of back plate for the printer. Um, so I did two different versions. They didn't turn out quite as nice as I had hoped. So this one is just done with a power, uh, textured PEI sheet on the Prusa because it's the only printer I have that's big enough to print this. And it's just kind of got that standard kind of PEI textured look to it. But I'm not sure if you guys can see, it's got some custom, let's try a different view. Shoulder. Here we go. So we've got the LDL logo up there. We've got my logo right there. We've got the Voron logo, my logo again. And then we've got 117, UNSC, and the Xbox logo. So this is just me kind of playing around. Uh, this one, as I mentioned, was printed on the um, uh, MK3S with a PEI sheet. And this one was printed with a, I think it's called PEO, but it's got a carbon fiber kind of texture to it. I'm not sure how well that shows up on camera, but yeah. Um, so we're gonna play around with these, see if you wanna replace the back panel with one of these when the time comes to do it, which won't be too long off, I guess. Uh, I probably spent close to 1500 or so on your Trident, I guess the finch but i ended up with enough leftovers to almost build a second printer that's pretty cool it's really good to have a lot of extras on hand um kits these days are pretty i'd say reliable and like come with like some good stuff but having some extra hardware extra you know whatever you might need is uh pretty pretty nice The carbon fiber thing looks nice, thank you. It, it's it got some, there's some areas where like when the light shines on it well, you can kind of see some, I don't know, can you guys see that like right there where it just looks a little funky and the actual carbon fiber? Uh, I don't know if I can get it to show up. But if you guys can't see it on camera, maybe that means it looks good enough, but. I, like, I was thinking of Master Chief's visor and some of his like under armor parts and how it has a little bit of a carbon fiber or hex pattern to it, so yeah. Uh, let's go back to the overhead. Um, I do wanna kind of talk about some of the components, but maybe we can talk about that just as we kind of unbox everything and start to open things up, so. How do I get to the overhead? There we go. Oh, I do need to change the, um, some of the color profiles on the different printers. I'm definitely noticing that on stream that they don't all kind of show up the same. 
Yeah, there's some areas where the effect isn't as clear, but I guess you just need to really uh, flat bed to get an even finish, yeah. Um, I noticed Zombie um, Hedgehog used uh, one of his Vorons to print them and they turned out really, really well. So maybe I'll reprint it sometime down the road or maybe I won't even use it, we'll see. I'll, I'll ask you guys when the time comes uh, what you guys think would be best. But yeah, I was a little disappointed actually that um, I tried to increase my settings for the stream to kind of get the best quality possible. So, um, you know, a lot of settings on YouTube are around the bit rate. So I tried to upscale to 1440p from my 1080p sources uh, so that I get a better bit rate and YouTube just like complained and, and crapped the bed. So we'll see what's up with that. But um, yeah, I guess there's not much else to do but get into the unboxing. So I'm gonna actually start recording this separately and hopefully it doesn't actually impact the, the stream quality at all. All righty, so I'm recording this camera over here to the right and I'm recording the top down view so I can use them in future videos. But uh, let's just get into it. And I don't know if I have a box cutter around here. So we're gonna use the closest and first thing we have, which is a pair of side cutters. I was actually just asking Steve about his top-down camera setup on his stream because it looks pretty nice and I kind of want to see if I can replicate it. But um, let's also change side cams to face cam. And then this guy. You guys get all the different views. So hopefully I can show it off in whichever way makes the most sense. Let's try to make sure there are no sensitive things in here, like my address. I don't see any. So many cameras, all the camera views. If it's annoying, let me know. I was just like, how can I add to the production quality? There's every once in a while where like a top down view, even though it's kind of the nicest orthogonal view, just doesn't work all that well. So I was thinking about that. Let me move my LTT water bottle. And now I gotta find my mouse with all my displays. Yeah, it's not annoying, it's cool. Okay, good to hear. Let's see if you can get this flap out of the way. Out breaking or dropping anything. Box is rather large. And this overhead light's a little shiny, but um, the first thing I noticed getting this open is just how nicely divide, uh, divided and packaged everything is. Um, I think I mentioned it in the, the FormBot kit, but uh, it's considered a little bit more of a bomb in the box in terms of like the parts are kind of loosely um, all set up in the box. Hey, Truggy, nice to have you in here. Um, but this, you can immediately open it up and just see how well packaged and all the little sub kits. Um, one thing about LDO is they sell a lot of their individual parts of their kits is individual SKUs. So if you go to Matter Hackers or West 3D or Fabrico, you can buy just their frame kit and you can buy just their motor kit. So that's kind of cool. And um, it just kind of reeks of, <laughs> reeks. it uh, shows a lot of quality and a lot of thought. So documents inside, let's check out what's in the documents. You got stickers, that's always nice to see, but just this alone, documentation, physical documentation is kind of nice to see. Uh, we've got some stickers, got more information about LEO and their products, a little 2023 <laughs> uh, calendar, a little, a little late for that, unfortunately. Um, just kind of a, a card for the kit. This is of course old, we actually have the, um, the new up-to-date kit. We have a cereal plate that uniquely identifies this guy, which is kind of cool. Ooh. How can I get that on camera? 
So that's definitely something that I'm not used to. A physical printed out bomb. And it actually has like a little seal of approval up there. Um, this is really nice because one thing I've noticed is that LDO really keeps their bombs super up to date. Um, you can go on their site and I'll, I might show it to you later and you can look at like your revision, like this is Rev E and they have the, the up to date bomb with the actual changes they make. Whereas other kit manufacturers, they post a bomb somewhere on GitHub or maybe on their listing and who knows like three weeks later if it's still up to date. So. Um, that's one thing I really uh, like about LDO is that they're really like, they track the lots that, you know, that they sell and they know a so-and-so bought a, a kit and that means that it has these components in it. So the ab ability to buy sets of uh, parts makes self-sourcing really nice, yes. And I think it makes things like kind of hybrid builds, if that makes sense, pretty nice. So you can buy a less expensive kit if you want to and then say, oh, I like LDO's motors, I like LDO's this, I like LDO's that, and you can buy those, those parts and kind of make your own hybrid. So, um, yeah, I like seeing a physical bomb in here. You can technically check stuff off. They have like little check mark columns so you know that you have everything, and if you don't have anything, you can kind of call them up. They also have links to their different documentations, and that's just really nice to see. Uh, let's see what you guys said. Wow, it's on Rev E. I didn't know LDO updates kits that much. Did they give you a six inch ruler inside yours? I'm not seeing one yet. I did get one at Earth. So we'll see. I know that they've had them in older kits, so maybe it's kind of somewhere else, but it wasn't inside the um, the documents. Yeah, we'll take a look at the different revisions um, on the website in a bit. So I'm a little bit worried about how I'm gonna organize this considering there's so many boxes and sub boxes, but this is just the S1 kit and the, the R1 revision update is I think is in this second box, but we start out with this guy, this is the Revo heater core nozzle pack. Um, so this is a Revo Voron edition. Um, that's a pretty big addition to this kit, which makes it, you know, kind of stand out in terms of price compared to some of the other kits. Um, a lot of the other kits are gonna come with some type of V6 CHC, which I don't know, is a 20 or $30 value. This comes with a Voron Revo, um, or Revo Voron edition with two different nozzles. If I was gonna guess, I'd say that's probably like a $140 value in of itself. If you bought a Voron uh, Edition Revo and then an extra nozzle, the nozzles are what, like 40 bucks themselves? So I would guess this is like almost a hundred and something dollar value. Um, so it comes in the blue version of the heat sink, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah, here's the heater core. It comes with the sock. This guy will kind of just snap onto there and then the nozzles will, uh, the autofocus is hunting a little bit more than I would like. And this guy will screw into this. So I plan on using this definitely 100% and it will be my first, um, uh, Revo that I will be using from E3D. I've used their uh, V6s a whole bunch, um, so this will be a nice improvement over that. But yeah, you get a 0.4 nozzle and a 0.6 nozzle, um, so that's a pretty good value. A um, lot of packaging, I will say that might be something that some people consider a little bit of a negative, but it is all cardboard, so it's recyclable. Um, but yeah, you're gonna have a lot of kind of like boxes and stuff laying around, so make sure you have enough room. I've got a little um, table off to the side where I can put stuff, but yeah, that's uh, starting off pretty good with the Voron Revo. Is it Revo Voron Edition or Voron Revo? I don't know. Uh, next we have the PSU, which is a Morsun, Morsun. Um, of course, the spec calls for a uh, Meanwell LRS 
24-150, um, so 24 volts, and I forget how many amps that is, but um, eight amps or something like that. But the LDO kit has a much higher wattage uh, bed, which we'll find at some point, and that requires more power. Um, so it is good to, uh, you know, kind of have more power than we need, I think, in general. But yeah, the the thing I've noticed, one thing I've noticed about the heat up time with the um, Formbot kit is that the 65 watt bed with a 120 watt PSU takes quite a while to get up to say like 105 uh, degrees. So um, yeah, having a 200 watt power supply seems like a good little little deal. Um, I still, well, I still have a lot of boxes from my V0.1 kit from a year ago. Yeah. I kind of like having little small boxes around to kind of store stuff and small parts for projects and things like that. Uh, spare boxes hold all the extra parts for older parts after mods. That's true. Um, I don't know if this is like taboo or not, but, uh, for my friends who do car mods, they have what they call a virginity box and everything they take off their car that they replace, they put in the virginity box. The idea being that if you ever needed to get the car back to stock, you could put it in its quote unquote virgin state. And sometimes I have that for my 3D printers, like my Creality CR10, which I'm never gonna take back to stock. I still have like the stock spool holder and the stock like other parts. So it's kind of funny. All right, PSU down. I guess I should maybe try to go a little bit faster. Mm, kind of chatty Cathy. LDO electronics and wirings kit. So you can, I think, just buy any of these individually. They all have their own SKUs. And then you can see it says uh, the different revisions. So maybe this one is on Rev E, but the Pico Bilical kit is still on Rev A. But some parts from my printer have swapped places. Yeah, you, you have like two Ender 3s, right? So have you like moved stuff around a lot? Um, in the electronics and wiring, of course, the kind of most prominent thing you see there is the Big Tree Tech Pico Bill, or um, excuse me, SKR Pico. Um, this is a pretty common, this is uh, two spec from the Voron spec in terms of um, what it comes with. Nothing much to see here. I don't know if you guys want me to actually unbox this now, um, but yeah, it's pretty standard. Um, if I recall right, it doesn't come with a rubber duck because of some type of customs thing, um, which is kind of funky, but uh, yeah, pretty standard main board and we'll be using this. Um, one thing that's kind of cool that about this kit is that it uses the Pico Bilical which moves, it's basically an extra MCU up at the frame and tool head, like the umbilical, but it gives you some IO back on your SKR Pico. So I think you get like at least one fan port back or maybe two fan ports back. So you can power like a Nevermore and you get some IO back, uh, which is kind of nice because maybe you won't need any, uh, a clipper expander if you um, are able to get enough IO out of this. So. I think like two extrusions to be a shoe, the actual, uh, actual location and a fan was swapped between the printer's gotcha. Yeah, I know you were planning on doing like a Core XY mod maybe for your Ender. Uh, we've got the pre-wired power inlet. Um, you know, playing with mains voltage or wiring up mains voltage is always a little bit of a um, worrisome thing. So especially if it's your first build but it looks like it has everything on here except for the, um, the earth ground. And then it comes with two fuses. I'm not sure if there's already a fuse in there, but um, extra fuses are always nice to see. We've got the print a Steppy kit. So Steppy is the kind of like um, a Voron cube kind of mascot for LDO and you can print one out once your printer is done. And this comes with some extra things like a little, I guess that's a keychain. Um, there's a, a bearing in there or a, a stepper shaft in there and some screws. And so it's, you know, kind of like a little 
would you call it a mascot? But then it's also a, a calibration print. So if these all fit on there well, then you know that your printer is printing out really nicely. Uh, we've got our kits, or um, excuse me, our fan kit. It comes with four fans, two of which are Axial 3010s, and two are Blower 3010s. So the Axial 3010s are actually different, which is interesting to see. I think these are both 3010s. One is an LDO Motors brushless model. And the other one is a Sunon uh, Maglev model. So I'm not sure which one is meant to go on the um, print head or not, but uh, there's a slight difference there. And then we've got the two blower fans and these are all uh, branded LDO. Kind of hard to see with the top down white. Um, the fans that came with the Formbot kit are the main thing I noticed that I thought were a little bit too low quality and the first thing I swapped out. I got some GDS time fans. Um, and put those in there and they've been running fine. I'll say that the fans that came in it didn't crap out or anything, but they felt very chintzy. Um, the lead started coming out of this little bracket right here and got pinched really, really easily. And I could tell that it was actually, the soldering joint was actually starting to come undone. So I went ahead and swapped those out. Um, that's something I recommended in my review of the Formbot kit to do. Uh, was replace the fans, but hopefully these are of much higher quality. If LDO is actually producing these in a plant or if they have some kind of a white label ODM deal, I'm not sure who the original manufacturer of them are. If anybody knows that, let me know. Uh, let me catch up with what Renovic said. Uh, mostly cut it up to Ender Core XY conversion, like two different versions, um, but it changed your mind again. And now I'm currently cutting cross gantry ver uh, version with triple be belted Z, which is like eight st <laughs> total steppers. Um, but I've sorted out all the costs and it's about a hundred dollars that you need to spend to get up to that. It's, it's like the cheapest of cheapest components though. Cool. Definitely, you know, post um, the progress that you have in some of the chats, either Steve's chat or um, Fetter's chat on Discord. Uh, we've got a, Heat sink for the pie. Looks like a, is that copper or brass? Uh, I don't know. I don't want to get too into detail on some of the minutia. We've got um, some bottom tubing. This is four, four by three. Man, that top down light really kind of disrupts things. So this is our reverse bowden. This is for going down from the spool uh, through the foot and up all the way through uh, the tool head. So this shouldn't be used inside of the print head. This is just to get filament up to the print head. Um, so there should be some other bottom tubes somewhere. Maybe it's in a tool head box. Plenty of zip ties, which is nice to see for cable management. And then a Kingston actual nicely branded um, 32 gigabytes SD card. So that's big enough for you to get the main cell and or fluid image on there, uh, whatever image you want to go with. And then also, you know, have plenty of room for uh, if you want to do things like uh, time lapses and stuff like that. So. Um, I, I think the minimum you need is like eight gigs. I can't quite recall, but um, it's good that they give you more than you need. So that's the electronics box, some nice components. Um, the fans are the major thing that I noticed that I was happy to see weren't kind of um, super cheap fans. And I haven't heard a whole lot of people replacing the LDO fans. So hopefully they're pretty good. he said uh i love their zip ties don't ask can't seem to find them thin enough locally that's an interesting little thing um you know these companies which are sourcing parts they're mostly in china from what i know or i think jason is technically in the u.s but his team is in china and they're so close to the manufacturing sources for a lot of these components be they cable ties you know uh cable tracks and all that kind of stuff but it that's how they're able to put together these kits for the price. I, I know, I think it was Modbot said he self-sourced his first V0.1 and it was like $1,200, $1,300 or something like that. Um, and you know, even though this is on the more expensive side for a kit, it's still under $700, which um, kind of says a lot. Uh, cable kit. It is a bag of cables. Um, I'm not sure this is up to date 
because this says X in stop with cable, um, Y in stop with cable. And so what I think this is, is that this is a, a V0.1 kit that's updated to V0.2 because V0.2 uses sensorless homing. So you don't need a X or Y in stop. So some of these cables basically might end up being um, extraneous for this, um, for this build. So there's a heat pad extension cable, heat pad thermistor cable, um, inlet to 24 volt PSU cable, 24 volt PSU to SKR cable. Um, oh, it's a 36 fan, 3006 fan, um, not a 3010 fan. Uh, a fan cable, a uh, cable sleeve and nylon. So, uh, what is that defense said? Defense, excuse me. Um, I'm not showing up. You won't be using those, gotcha, okay. So yeah, that's one thing that I think might cause a little bit of confusion for some people with LDO kits is that they kind of keep the same base kit and then the revisions have like additions which bring them up to the most up-to-date one. Steve Builds has several builds where he's updating older LDO Voron uh, V0 kits up to the new ones, so you can also just buy their upgrade kits. So um, I love seeing this. This is all pre crimped. The connectors are already on there for most of these. Um, they're very well labeled. You can see they've got heat shrink on them with actual text. Uh, so, like they use a label maker. We've got nylon um, cable management stuff, pre crimped mains wires. Uh, really, really nice. Um, this crimping ain't easy as. Um, Nero likes to say, so having all this stuff done for you, I would imagine has to take hours off the build time. It's becoming more standard. You know, if you look back at my Formbot kit, it also had pretty much all pre-crimped wires, pre-cut to length, and it definitely saved me a whole lot of time. Um, so, you know, maybe cable quality is a little bit different. I know that to, this cable right here to the bed heater is a nice kind of, I, I, I'm not sure if it's FEP, or, but it's not like silicone and it's not um, a typical uh, like urethane. It's, it's made to go inside of cable chains. So that's where you can see that LDL pays more attention to um, the uh, bronze specs because anything that goes inside of a cable chain is supposed to be a certain type of wire and other kits don't really abide by that. In a V0, um, you don't necessarily need to worry about the cable chain all that much because it's a Z cable chain and it, doesn't move you know up and down constantly it kind of just moves when you home and then slowly as you print so whether or not you need this kind of more expensive cable inside of a v0 cable chain i'm not sure but it just kind of goes to show how much attention to detail uh, ldl pays so um not seeing anything of note here is our x in stop which we won't be needing the y in stop is here as well which we won't be needing um we got ferrules on everything, some terminal crimps on others, and everything looks pretty nice. This is, I imagine, the Z end stop, but yeah. Um, probably, what did Chuggy say? Probably cheaper to just leave it and have spare parts. That probably makes sense. If you think about the man hours it would take in order to open up the boxes, remove the old parts, um, it probably is cheaper for, or less expensive for them to just keep it the same, like you're saying, and then in the additional box have the parts that are different. So pre crimped wires, probably some extra stuff in there. And you know, that's the kind of stuff that's nice to have around if you're ever building or fixing another printer, having some extra quality Omron in stops is a, a nice thing. So, um, Kirigami bed mounting kit. So this is a whole kit and not just the frame. Um, that was one thing. The, the, the Kirigami frame in the Formbot kit was a, a whole to do, to be honest. Um, it was out of spec from what I could see when I measured it. It was about 2.5 millimeters in most um, most areas. From everything I've read, this is like one of the best Kirigami beds in terms of being to spec. 
I don't think I have my calipers down here. They're upstairs, but at some point I will measure this. But from everything I've seen from other people's builds, it has been absolutely um, to spec. It's got a, a nicer finish, I'd say, than the um, Formbot and I actually have an extra. Oops, almost fell. Extra Formbot Kirigami bed I bought to do some testing and I'm not sure how easy it's gonna be. There's definitely differences in some of the cuts. From what I can see, oh, maybe not. I mean, it, they're all based off of like the same DXF file from what I know, and then it's just some bending done, but you might be able to see a difference in the finishing. This is a much kind of more matte finish. I think they're both powder coated from what I can tell, but this is a, a little bit more glossy. It has a little bit more of a kind of, I don't know, twinkle to it. The form bot frame has a little bit of like a rough finish in some areas from where Maybe they got like a little bit of extra powder coating on there or maybe they're spraying it, I'm not sure. Um, but from what I can see in terms of like squareness, it's about the same. Uh, I found the Formbot kit Kirigami bed to be fairly square out of the box and this one is looking pretty good as well. I've seen some people do builds where they um, really had to kind of torque around the frame to get it square. And I'm not sure if that was just older Kirigami beds or what, but um, both of these look pretty good. Before I do the build, I will of course kind of check them for squareness with a, some kind of a rule. Oddly enough, I don't have a Voron ruler um, next to me right now. But I mean, that's looking decent. I'm not seeing much of a gap there, so. These flanges being coplanar is really, really important. When you're putting them on the rails, if these flanges are out of plane at all, it's gonna basically end up over constraining your Z axis and it, you know, it's not necessary that your Z axis kind of skates, but um, you definitely want it to, to move as freely and not bind. Um, so yeah, from what I've heard, their bed is of really, really high quality, very much two spec, won't have to print any extra, hopefully, um, or different uh, parts for it. And then it also comes with the actual kit component. So one of the benefits of using the Kirigami bed is that you can do stuff like break out all the wires. Um, so if you think about this frame, holding your bed and you know being attached to the, the inside of the, the printer, um, the Kirigami frame kind of gives you a spot to put Mount Wagos where you can break out and pull the whole bed out of the frame and work on it. So if you need to change the thermal fuse, if you need to change the magnet, if you need to do anything, um, then yeah, you can do that a little bit more easier. Ooh, saw some people pop up in chat, Alex. Um, pop up please. Is that Kirigami part uh, custom production for the V0.2 or is it used in another product? other than a Voron. It is for, it is a Voron V0 mod from what I can see. Um, I think I recall somebody maybe printing or making, designing a V0 like Core XY printer and they might use the Kirigami frame, but it's definitely, it was designed for the V0. Whether or not anybody else is kind of like using it, I'm not sure. Um, Zombie, hello. I was mentioning your stream a little bit earlier. Um, I did get these printed out. They're not quite as nice. I think I sent you pictures of this. Um, but I got a brand new PEO sheet and tried printing the carbon fiber um, version of, or printing Mandix uh, backplate in carbon fiber. And it looks pretty good in the right lighting. Like you can see the carbon fiber pattern. Just at certain angles, you can kind of see some like smearing. And I'm not sure if it was like alcohol that I wiped down the, the plate with or what, but um, yeah, we'll see which one looks better. And then this one is just a standard kind of uh, uh, powder coated or textured PEI. It might just be like the extrusion, like the way it changes direction. Can you see how it kind of starts and stops in certain spots? Maybe it has to do with like the direction or I'm not sure, but you can kind of see it in this light, just that the, it just looks a little inconsistent. Whether or not it'll be noticeable in the printer, we'll see. Uh, when it comes time, I'll try to decide which one I want to use.
Yeah, maybe a different pattern might work better. I printed it on um, the Prusa inside of a um, enclosure, so that might have something to do with it. Um, like the carbon fiber better. Cool, so um, yeah, this comes with all the fasteners that you need. Um, threaded insert, or excuse me, um, heat set inserts, all the uh, screws. From what I've read, this is all stainless steel fasteners. So they should be nice and rust resistant if you live in a particularly uh, humid area. I've got the M4 or M2 by four screws, 12 pieces of that. I think that's to actually mount it to the carriages. And then we have the rest of the wiring kit. So I actually bought this wiring kit for my FormBot build because I thought a big benefit of the actual Kirigami bed is to be able to detach the, the bed if I need to. Um, so I bought this and put it on my FormBot even though it wasn't kind of like a part of it. But this comes with two PCBs. One is the actual um, uh, NeoPixel PCB. So this mounts to the front of the bed and you can run a three pin wire, which they already have for you there. And then they don't have the JST on this side so that you can pass it through the cable chain. Um, and it's got red for power, white for data, and then the unlabeled one is ground. It comes with a thermistor breakout cable so that you can plug the, the board side thermistor into one end and the bed side into the other, and then you can you know remove the whole thing. Here's the other JST cable, and then it comes with two Wago mounts so that you can quickly detach the heater and um, the heater in and the heater out so that you can pull the whole bed out. So I really thought that was a huge benefit of the um, the Kirigami kit. So I went ahead and bought this and put it on my form bot. So I'll, I should be pretty familiar with that process. I'll say that's gonna be an interesting thing in general is to see how much faster this kit goes um, to build now that I'm you know a lot more familiar with the V0.2 build process. Move this out of the way. Then it looks like we have panels. I need to cut open. And I'll zoom back out in a second. Let me know if you guys like that view better or we can switch it up and go to this view. I'm not sure that's going to be better. Maybe for certain stuff. Um, I believe these are acrylic panels. Uh, that's a difference from the FormBot kit, which came with all polycarbonate panels. Um, I haven't seen anybody note one being particularly better than the other. I do know that in the PC case world, they've moved to polycarbonate a lot because it's a little bit more scratch resistant and fog resistant inside of a, you know, for a PC, but I don't know that it makes much of a difference inside of a Voron. Alex, overhead, good for unboxing, good to know. Yeah, the only thing I don't like about this is that it kind of focus hunts every once in a while too much. So maybe I can put it on manual focus and that will be a little bit better. And then um, the camera angle isn't all that wide. So I need to find a wider view lens that isn't fisheye. I had a, a different lens up there, but it was fisheye and I had to do like fisheye compensation to try to make it non fisheye, but I can't go any higher with the camera. If that makes sense. So um, this is kind of what I've got to deal with. So this is something I called out in the form bot unboxing and build. They have every panel, it looks like labeled. So this is just a really small convenience thing, I guess. But it does take a little bit of time to kind of identify what panel is what, and several of the panels look very, very similar. Um, 
So having them like pre-labeled is kind of nice. This does include the old top hat um, acrylic because you know this is an upgraded kit. Uh, the, the upgrade is in this other box. Um, it's interesting that some of it is this kind of clear stuff that's really easy to remove. And then I guess the black acrylic, which is laser cut, has this brown stuff, which is notoriously hard to remove on a lot of kits. But I do like that everything is labeled so that you can easily find it. You know, you can take all the top hat stuff, easily identify what's top hat, and move it over to the side because you know you know you don't need it until the very end of the build. So that's something I actually, you know, suggested that Formbot try to do in their kit. Um, so I'm glad to see that they've done it. Um, I'm not sure if this is gonna get replaced or not. If this is like a V0.1 bottom panel, then it, I think this cutout notch needs to be in a different spot. So we'll see when we open up the, the upgrade portion of the kit. But I, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that everything is in here. Um, I'll do a little bit of a checklist down the road, but we've got both black and clear, and the clear is in like a nice, easy to remove clear uh, protective sheeting. Uh, we've got this little cable track. I assume I'm gonna have to cut this down in order to use it inside of the V0. This is something unique that Veron does on a lot of their um, printers. It allows you to kind of manage some of the cables. So imagine this is running down the center of your printer and you've got like different components off to the left and right. You can kind of have them come in and organize the cables and it's kind of nice to have. You can kind of slide it on from what I've seen but you can also kind of pop it on from the side and kind of press and snap them in, um, depending on how much space you have. So uh, yeah, I assume I'm gonna have to cut that down, so I might have to take it out to my scroll saw to do so, so I don't make a mess inside. Uh, what should we do next? Let's do this guy, because it looks different. Sweet cable track. Yeah, that's something that I think some other guys have started to do, some other kit manufacturers has include something. I actually printed out a version of that for my Formbot kit um, that a, a user mod, a, a user had created. Um, we got a power cable. It came in a fancy uh, black bag. It's labeled C13. I'm not sure if that's a specific kind of spec or ISO standard for power cables, but it's, uh, what gauge is this? I assume it's an inadequate power cable, and it's uh, U.S. Um, I assume everything sold by form, um, excuse me, by Matter Hackers will be uh, U.S. and North America will say. I think Canada and Mexico use the same connector. I'm not sure though. Let's look at the motors next. It's a pretty chunky box. So I mean, we are talking about LDO motors. Uh, it's one of the things that they're the most well known for is they produced the motors in a lot of the Crusoe printers and some other OEM um, printer manufacturers. So that's kind of what they're most well known for. Uh, we've got some labels. So you can label uh, their little kind of AB markers. So you can identify your A and B wiring um, for knowing what's what. Uh, Canada, Mexico, and US use the same outlets and voltage. I've never been to Canada or Mexico. I need to, to travel more, get out of the country. I've been into the Caribbean, but or Caribbean, whichever you want to say, but I haven't been to either of our neighbors in North America. Um, so we've got our JST connectors for the wires, but they're already pre-crimped which is interesting. I'm not sure why we need an extra set. Maybe it's just an extra that they include to be nice, but we have our LDO pancake motor for the mini stealth burner. I will be using just a standard mini stealth burner at first. Zombie, I'm, I'm sure you would probably rather I put a dragon burner inside of it, um, maybe down the road, but I'm gonna build it stock at first and then swap in parts to kind of give a little bit of a review. Um, so yeah. Uh, this is, I think, kind of the gold standard for these pancake motors. Um, we now have uh, Galileo 2, you know, that's come out and some other offerings. Um, but 
gonna go with the standard. What is, is this called pocket watch? What is it called when it's inside of a mini stealth burner? I'm not sure. Um, we've got our uh, anti-backlash nut. This is used to kind of put some um, spring force against the bed so that it doesn't kind of uh, move from what I know. Then we've got our Z motor, which is of course, again, an LDO. Nice laser etching on here. It's got uh, the fact that it's 1.8. Um, we've got, I guess, a Teflon uh, coated lead screw, I'm guessing. It's not like a, the standard brass or, or stainless steel. Um, I do know that some lots of this kit had motors that came with them, Z motors, which had, I guess, maybe an overly aggressive lead screw, and it was causing it to kind of erode out the palm nut. Um, so that's something I'm gonna try to be aware of. Uh, I'm not sure if LDO knows, based on what like lot and revision number you have, whether or not you have that problem, but, um, yeah, that's something I know that some people had to deal with. Hey, Chris, nice to see you. Um, Chris was actually building a printer. Um, somebody asked if anybody else had used a Kirigami bed on a printer. And Chris, from what I recall, you were building a V0-esque, not a Voron printer. Um, and you might have been considering using the Kirigami bed. Um, let me know if I made that up or not. Um, so we'll see if this is um, one of the lead screws that was causing people issues. One great thing about LDO though, is that um, if you have any problems with any of their products, you can just contact them and they seem to be really, really on the ball and will replace things and make sure you're happy pretty quickly. Uh, then we've got our A and B motors, which are pretty standard fare. But again, I assume that these are pretty high quality. They're all 1.8 from what I know. And um, maybe I will try, actually try to do the TMC auto-tune for this printer. I haven't um, done it on my form bot yet, but I've heard pretty good things. So these are all, you know, pre-terminated. Um, there's an extension for the Z. So I'm not exactly sure why we get a whole bag full of um, these guys, but we'll see what they're for down the road. You know, that's a pretty, common reason that people like to buy the LDL kit is that their extrusions and motors are kind of considered to be the best. Uh, fun fact, it's impossible to locate NEMA 17 integrated lead screw with 150 millimeters and that pancake stepper motor. Interesting. Um, I can't use the Kirigami bed as is because part that goes uh, past your back plate. Gotcha. So I designed another type of bed mount. Gotcha. But yeah, um, if you publish that anywhere, definitely let folks know and we will share it. If anybody else is interested in printing tiny printers. Uh, Bench said, just in case you never use the extra ends. Chris, um, unless Jason from LDO can make one 150 millimeter NEMA, the one in the kit is 200, gotcha. Well, maybe if Jason watches this, I'm not sure. Um, but we can also, you know, maybe as a community kind of point him towards the direction of your, your printer and project and see if that's something that he would at least be willing to talk to you about. That would be really cool. Next up, we have the frame kit. Again, this is something that's sold individually. I like that it has all these little hearts on them. I'm not sure what specific parts have the hearts, but hearts have the hearts rhyming incidentally. Uh, but all of these are individually wrapped extrusions, which is interesting. Um, from what I've heard, they're all tapped on both ends. So um, that can be a little bit difficult in terms of identifying which extrusion is which. So you have to really pay attention to the blind holes and the links are all pretty much the same. So you have to look at like, there's two blind holes on that side of this one and one on this side of this one and you have to identify it. That's something I wish kit manufacturers would maybe be a little bit better about since most of them are tapping both ends 
of the extrusions is having some way to quickly identify them. You know, this is a box full of almost identical extrusions and it's really important that you make sure you use the right extrusion on the right part of the build and if you don't you're going to be disassembling your printer and rebuilding it. So there's a lot of cool convenient stuff in this LDO kit and that's something I wish that any and every manufacturer would do is just somehow figure out a way to identify the extrusions. I think it would probably add a lot to the like man hours and QA process but it would kind of save people I would imagine like at least 20 minutes of time identifying the extrusions and making sure you have the right one. Um, but yeah, you can get frame kits in different colors. Um, oh, the heart is the color. That makes sense. Thanks to Finch. Uh, what did Chris say? My printer is the Duro. It's about 90% complete, but I want to finish it and send out a few test kits to certain people. Hint, hint, hint. Okay. Wink, wink, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Um, definitely keep me in mind. Um, I'm liking these little printer builds. They're really, really fun. And they actually have space for them. You know, I look at everybody who wants to build a 350 millimeter, like 2.4, and then, you know, all the crazy uh, versions of that. And I'm like, where am I gonna put those printers? But these tiny ones are kind of nice because I can actually just stack them side by side on my shelf and they take up the space of like one CR10, so. Um, not a whole lot much more to say about the um, extrusions. LDO, um, they're not maker beam style extrusions. They have their own profile, but they do allow you to use their drop-in nuts. So a big thing about the V0.2 kit is that you need to preload most of the nuts while you're building the kit because you can't slip them in. Um, but LDO has some hardware that allows you to um, do post build installs of nuts um, if you forget one or if you need to add a mod and their extrusions allow for that just you know um, the shape that they are if you use maker beam it's more of a t-style um, extrusion profile and you can't really get any kind of custom um, nuts inside of there so we're almost through this box fasteners tools and miscellaneous i don't know if i'll spend much time you know, well it is miscellaneous. We've got our compressor feet, rubber feet to help deaden, um, dampen the printer. We've got machine screws M2 by six. Don't know what those are specifically for. I guess the rails, that would make sense. Um, all the M2 are either the rails or the frame mounting to the rail. Uh, we've got some magnets, neodymium magnet six by three. We've got our VHB tape. I love VHB, I've started using it in a lot of spots. First heard about it from Adam Savage, from Tested and um, Mythbusters, and it's pretty great. The, yeah, I'll do another update probably in mid-March, there's lots of other stuff coming up in between. Gotcha, definitely keep us appraised. Uh, we get a tool set that's kind of unique. The form bot didn't come with any tools, at least um, just like we have a small flathead screwdriver, some Allen keys uh, that are ball end on one side and, and typical hex on the other. Um, then we also get the heat set insert. Tool. So this will fit um, typical hacko style um, I need to stop saying mm so much. Typical hacko style soldering irons. Please focus. I definitely need to turn on manual focus uh, so that you can insert your heat sets really nicely. That will be nice because I do have this guy, which is the Vector 3D vertical linear DLMP, is that what it is? Um, but yeah, it's their, their heat set insert tool and I've got a Hacko guy on there. So maybe I'll try th this one out in comparison to the kind of cheapo one I got off of Amazon and see if it's any better. Uh, but tools are nice, you know? Um, if you didn't have an assortment of tools, uh, then this would hopefully get you started. I'm not sure it's every tool you need to build the kit, but I like that they're doing that. Then we have all the assortment of sprues. 
and they are all individually bagged. Um, I do know that some of the other parts of the kit have their own individual screws included there so that's something to keep in mind this isn't like every screw that you'll need in the kit and i imagine that the upgrade part of the kit also has to be um uh also has its own hardware so the uh tiger flyer i'm building an ldo 2.4 and it came with the rolling nuts never seen these before and they are awesome uh would they fit in a v0.2 extrusion no they don't um the v0.2 is 1515 based on the maker beam. Um, that was kind of the first, from what I know, uh, extrusion that was in the 1515 size, 15 millimeters, not, there's another 15 series that's 1.5 inches, which is close to 40 millimeters, which is like, I know it from sim rigs, but yeah, I love the roll-in style um, nuts, but there's no way to get them to work on um, the 1515 extrusion from what I've seen, they just have, these nuts which are included in this kit which are essentially square nuts that have been ground down on one side to allow them to slip in so here are the ldo drop-in nuts ah just kidding this camera the focus is a pain in the butt come on focus please that's Uh, these are the slide-in nuts and you can see they're just square nuts that they've like had ground down on one side so they're a little bit of a trapezoid so that you can kind of slide them into the side of the profile that'd be a lot better uh in my opinion than preloading yeah that's the finicky thing about uh v0 kits in any of their kind of derivatives so any of the printers for ants that use 1515 is you have to kind of think about the the planning portion of it to make sure the the v0 bomb or excuse me manual is really good about calling it out so it's not like i i have heard of people who have messed up and not preloaded nuts and had to drill holes or maybe you know um several guys from the voron um uh, team have had to do it because they've kind of modified their printers over time but uh, I think with, if you follow the instructions in the manual pretty well, there's plenty of like nut checks and such. So <laughs> nut checks, um, but yeah, it should be fairly easy um, to make sure you get them all preloaded, but it is a pain. Uh, what did Chris say? One reason I went with 2020 in my build is there's just a lot more options for them. Yeah, you can use the hammerhead nuts. Um, there's obviously the slide-in ones. I'm not sure if there are ball or leaf nuts for 2020. Um, they might be a little bit prohibitively, prohibitively expensive if there are. Uh, Imperial being goofy again. Uh, I'm pretty sure they make smaller rolling nuts for 1515. That would be very nice. But again, would they be like too prohibitively expensive? Is that why no kit manufacturers are including them? because they would definitely make the process a whole lot easier, like Tiger Flyer was saying. Uh, they have several checkpoints um, where you can double check them, yes. Uh, so many times with Metric and Imperial are referring to the same name, but entirely different. Yes, 1515 extrusion is 1.5 inches if you order from certain American companies like T-Nuts but 15, 15 means 15 by 15 millimeters. Um, it's a whole to do. I do, um, I have a custom SIM rig and it's made out of 4040 extrusion, which is a little bit harder to find in the United States, but I was able to find some 15 series extrusion, which is 1.5 inches, which comes out to like, what? 38.85 millimeters or something like that. It's, so most of the stuff fits together, but that's where I got first heard of the um, rolling nuts. I actually have some somewhere See, these are big chonky rolling nuts from my sim rig and they have these guys which are these very hefty um, ball ball style guys and yeah you just kind of side push them in they slide in and then you rotate around and you can 
They retain their positions, so you don't have to use the no drop nut mods or anything like that. They're really, really nice to have. If there is a version of these for 15.15 that isn't super expensive, that would be awesome. You have a big bid on the custom rig, and that's specifically on it. I have some sim racing videos back on the channel. Um, I will be posting some more sim racing videos, so if that's of interest. I did record the whole process of building the sim rig, so I don't know. And I also have like a whole lot of 3D printed parts on the sim rig, so I could blend the two topics together if people are interested in it. All right, linear rail kit. This is actually sealed shut, possibly for um, making sure that they don't rust. It's interesting that these are kind of one of the only things that were sealed shut. But I guess it is possible that it's done so just because it's different. <laughs> oh, so we have their nut bars. So these are some type of stainless steel or I don't think they're aluminum, I'm not sure, but they are pre-drilled with holes and taps so that you can slide these into the extrusion and they match up with the linear rails so you don't have to worry about preloading a whole bunch of nuts into the extrusion. Or they do have like nut carrier bars that you can print out to put the nuts in, but you know, these would presumably make that whole process a whole lot faster, a little bit easier. Um, yeah, another kind of small thing that LDO does to kind of help make the build go a little bit faster. Yeah, a sim racing, uh, sim racing rig using 15, 15 millimeter extrusions. <laughs> I can't even speak. Uh, a sim racing rig using 15 millimeter extrusions would be interesting. I've seen somebody try to build one out of 2020, and it was a little bit more of a desktop oriented one. So that one that he could like put a direct drive, which is a very strong sim racing wheel onto his desktop. And it turned out okay, but a whole one that you actually sit in and strap a seat to, that would be very interesting. Maybe that'd be a funny like April Fool's joke, like a sim rig for ants. That would be kind of <laughs> kind of fun. Um, so for the linear rails, we've got one, two, three, four, five total. Four of them seem identical. They are LDO branded. Gosh, this overhead light killing me. Um, so I'm not sure who the OEM might be. It seems um, unlikely that LDO is like manufacturing these in a plant. I would guess that it's kind of an ODM situation. They're paying somebody to build these to spec and then getting their own branding on them. That's becoming pretty common. You know, Fabrico has their Honey Badger. I think Rails, um, I think West 3D has their own branded one. So that's becoming, you know, a fairly, same, uh, fairly common thing. This rail, is a Highwind branded rail though, and it is specifically, I believe, for the X axis. So it has a different preload than all of the other rails. You need to make sure that you use this for your, um, for your X axis. But um, happy to see that they're not completely covered in shipping grease. Um, a lot of the time stuff that is known is gonna be on like a shipping container from China for a really long time ends up getting covered in this nasty grease that isn't good for actual operation it's just to protect it from rusting and you end up having to spend a whole lot of time getting all that gunk off so that you can re-grease it with something better so none of these seem to be like overly covered in grease which is nice to see that's just a little time saver so um we will clean these and we will kind of grease them up I'm not sure if it's going to be this stream or the next stream but um they'll get done i was a little nervous last time um we when I was kind of cleaning the rails and doing them, it was my first core XY machine. So I had never really done that before. And I was nervous I was going to, I don't know, wreck them somehow, but things turned out okay. What are you guys chatting about? Sim racing, sim rig for toddlers. What is this, a sim rig for toddlers? Um, my LDO kit ended up getting a replacement X rail because it was sloppy. Interesting. Um, was that fairly quick and you know harmless? Would you say? Uh, I've heard really good stuff about customer 
customer service. Uh, so tool head in motion. Lots of small parts in here. So we have some set screws. And an interesting part, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see it, is that for the screws in the LDO kit that require it, like your, your set screws or grub screws, they already have pre-applied um, thread locker on them. So anywhere you're doing metal on metal, you generally want to use thread locker to make sure that the screws don't vibrate, um, uh, vibrate loose. And they've already got th uh, pre-applied thread locker. So that's another little um, kind of small time savings type thing. And again, you know, like you kind of ask why this kit is more expensive than others. That kind of kind of hints at it. Uh, yeah, it was really easy and Jason worked with you directly. Jason, I can't really speak highly enough about the guy. Everything I've heard about him and every interaction I've had with him has been really, really cool. Um, it was one of the LDL rails. That might be why they changed to the high one then. Yeah, if it was an earlier V0.1 kit and they weren't able to get kind of the specs and performance that they needed, maybe they switched to high one just to make it easier. Uh, preload means preloaded with grease. No, preload is essentially, how do you describe it? It's the clearances and or tolerances in the rails between the actual, um, there's, you know, the, the, the rail carriage has a bunch of ball, uh, ball bearings that travel along a raceway and that goes along the, the linear rail. The preload describes the clearance between the individual ball bearings and the raceways that it fits into. So a lighter preload will essentially have a bit more slop in it. The, the tolerances aren't as tight. A higher preload will have closer tolerances which will be tighter, but if you have multiple linear rails in a system with a high preload, there's a higher chance of them binding from what I've learned. Um, yeah, they're rated for a specific weight. So it's, it's down to kind of like the clearances that they use and the parts that they use to spec them for a specific purpose. So you're gonna have a different preload for a linear rail used in one of these 3D printers than a linear rail used on a heavy duty um, CNC mill, if that makes sense. Um, I'm not sure if there's a good definition somewhere I can bring up. It's the near rail preload. Continue to say, why do you have an ad on this? That's Ridiculous. So preload is the elimination of internal clearance between the rail and carriage or between the ball and ball nut. So it's just like how things fit together and how closely they fit together to allow a certain amount of slop. So if you have a really heavy tool head or something that will be riding on a rail, it's gonna need a different preload and like loading than um, something that's lighter, I guess. I'm not an expert on this. Again, my first printer with linear rails was the, um, the Formbot V0 that I built. So I was a little nervous about getting those set up, but uh, everything went well. So we've got the grub screws I mentioned, they're already preloaded with um, uh, thread locker, which is a, a cool little time-saving type thing. You don't have to worry about it. Um, I guess if you are loosening and tightening these several times and the thread locker starts to come apart, then you might need to reapply it. But um, yeah, M4x4. Um, what are these for? The motor shafts, the AB motors? Yeah, you have two per AB um, motor, right? Um, other tool head screws. Okay, they do include what looks like Capricorn. Um, in, uh, four by two millimeter inner diameter for the tool head. So on the mini stealth burner, you're going to insert this into your Voron and you need a certain amount to stick out and you'll use the tool to snap it. So they include some pretty high grade uh, Capricorn tube. This is known to be a little bit higher heat resistant. Um, so this, it, it, it is an all metal um, 
extruder, or excuse me, hot end, uh, to be sure. This just goes a certain way down to meet up with the hot, the, what do you call it? The heat break, right? Um, I'm having a hard time making words right now. Uh, so this butts up against the, the heat break in the uh, hot end. So it's an all metal hot end, but it's just nice to have kind of high quality um, tubing to use for that. We have legitimate Bond Tech uh, BMG parts. So the Formbot kit, I'm pretty sure, did not include genuine Bond Tech parts. Most kits I've seen, I would assume, don't include genuine parts. So, you know, I think this kit is like 40 to $50 from Bond Tech directly. Maybe it's like 25, I'm not sure. But it's probably a lot more expensive than the ones that come in the, um, the more inexpensive kit. So I'm trying to point out places in a certain, um, in certain areas where, you know, it kind of explains why this kit is more expensive, if that makes sense. Uh, we've got all of our, what are these, FRS something bearings? I forget what the exact designation of them is. It's probably on here. Um, F623 2RS bearings, 24 pieces for all of our bearing stacks. That's half of a Voron build, it's building bearing stacks. We've got our uh, 22 bearings, or excuse me, uh, pulleys. Two of those, for the, one for the A motor and one for the B motor. More hardware for the mini stealth burner. We've got our two bearings for the, oh gosh, it's not focused whatsoever. Sorry about that, guys. Can you focus down here? No? Can I manually focus it? That's not working either. It's like half of a streamer's problem is just spending time making the, the camera focus on what you want. Uh, but yeah, these are inside of the uh, extruder assembly. Um, basically, where's the little Bontek guy? This, um, this white guy right here rides on these bearings to, to make it a nice smooth action. And then finally, we have the, the belts. These are branded as Gates belts, which is kind of the, I guess, standard. Um, you can buy non-Gates belts for probably less expensive. Um, the ones in the Formbot kit were surprisingly branded Gates as well. Um, but yeah, that's everything we need for the tool head. I do have some, <laughs> how do you say them? Rigdegas and Idgas, the integrated um, uh, grub screw or, uh, what are they from Bontech? Ridga? I think it's the one that you need for for a mini stealth burner. Uh, desktop, desktop. Reverse integrated drive gear assembly for BMG extruders. I have several of these, so maybe we could do some experimentation to check and see if it makes any actual you know, difference. Um, the idea that this is integrated onto the shaft in one piece is that you don't have a grub screw, which can kind of create a little bit of weird run out. Um, so that if you, if, if you can imagine the shaft not being completely concentric with the outside of the gear, if it's kind of lopsided or off to one side, then as it rotates, it's gonna slightly over and under extrude. So um, yeah, we can do some testing to see if there's any perceivable distance or excuse me, difference between a standard um, Bontech uh, BMG internal and the Ridga. Chris said, Gates belts are inexpensive enough uh, not to include them. Wait, Gates belts are inexpensive enough not to include them these days and they are way better than the belts that are used, used to be included with uh, printers. Yeah, I think Creality still uses some, they look like they're Kevlar reinforced or steel reinforced, but they're they're kind of stretchy and rubbery, at least the ones on my Ender 3. Maybe their newer printers have better quality ones, but yeah, it just seems like you're right. They're inexpensive enough that it just makes sense to include them in any kits. Because you're, you're buying them probably by like the kilometer on a reel, right? 
um, as a, a kit manufacturer or a printer manufacturer, it's not like you're buying a whole bunch of one foot segments. Not to be included, gotcha, I, I guess what you meant. But yeah, um, if you guys think that'll be worthwhile, then that's definitely something you can play around with. Is the Ridga at all valuable to use inside of a uh, mini stuff burner? Build plate and parts. So this is presumably the bed. So we've got our cable chain. Um, there's different styles of cable chain. Some that have like two holes, some that have the three holes. And one thing I noticed that I had to deal with was the cable chain on the form bot, the link that linked it to the bed, it kind of like folded over a little bit. So I actually had to find a printed version of that first link that didn't allow it to fold over because you want like a nice parabolic shaped kind of cable chain, right? You don't want it to be kind of leaning off to the side. So we'll see if these, actually I might be able to check it right now. So yeah, so basically on the other cable chains, the less expensive ones, if when the cable gets down here, it starts to flop over that way, if that makes sense. But on these, it looks like it doesn't do that. So that's good to see. Nice smooth path. There's a couple extra links. I assume these aren't used, but maybe they're provided for if uh, you break some. Next up, we have the bed springs, your typical yellow die springs um, of some amount of spring force. Uh, but we see these everywhere. I guess they're used in like die cast machines in order to like, stamp stuff. And we've just started using them in 3D printers. I use them a lot in sim racing gear as well. Um, I assume these are pretty standard. Eight by four by 20 millimeters, which I think is the Voron spec. Then we have our thermistor. Um, there's a very interesting thermistor hookup for this guy. It actually is a screw in module instead of one that's like glued to the bed or directly integrated. Um, so that's kind of unique. It reminds me of the thermistor I had on, what was it, a Mark? Uh, Mark 8 extruder on my um, Modern Price Maker Select Plus, where you screwed the, uh, there was some that you could just put into the hole and then there were other ones that you could screw in. And the screw in ones were nicer because they were easier to replace. And you didn't have to worry about using any thermal grease. It also has a little springy guy on there, which is kind of unique and nice, just as some uh, stress relief, I assume. Not sure if you guys can see that, but there's a little wire spring on there um, to help make sure that if this is somehow moving around, that it's not going to wear out right there and uh, come loose and give you thermal, thermal runaway problems. Nice small details. Next up, we have a, what I assume is the bed. So I think this is a pretty unique bed um, from all the wrong kits that I've seen. It's, I think they say it's a polymide. Is that the right term for it? I have it up here somewhere. Heated bed. Somebody will know the term. Come on, chat. Help me out. Don't make me look like a fool. Oh, uh, where is my, uh, I have a Google Doc with all the stats for this guy somewhere. Where is it, where is it, where is it? Nobody's answered in chat. I don't have one of mine yet, not sure, gotcha. Oh, I found my document. So what is so special about this bed? It is a hundred watts. So that means it's going to heat up way faster. The Voron spec I think is 65 watts. There are some 75 watt heated beds out on the market that you can buy and that come in kits, but this is a hundred watts, which means it's gonna heat up 
quite a bit faster than my FormBot kit, and I would imagine faster than most of the other um, kits on the market. Um, has a integrated, already pre-applied thermal fuse. So I feel like this took me about like 20 minutes to get installed on my other bed. Just the whole bed being basically pre-assembled in general is gonna save you, I would guess about 20 minutes to an hour, depending on how fast you are. So the thermal fuse is already on there. Um, it's already pre-terminated with the, the right length wires with ferrules on it, which is really, really nice to see. Um, and then it is a polymide heated bed. So I guess that's this kind of PCB FR um, tin type material with uh, this heat trace through it. Basically a giant resistor, right? You pass electricity through a resistor and it heats up. Um, but this is a pretty high quality from what I've seen. Uh, Nick mentioned a couple things about the bed. Nick, Nick, hello. Uh, the temperature sensor is really cool. Yeah, this thermistor. So it screws in right there in the, in the center, which is pretty unique. I haven't seen anybody else who has that on the bed. Uh, like I mentioned, I've seen some hot end assemblies that have something similar, but not on the bed. So that will make, you know, if you do need to replace it, that'll make replacing it fairly simple. Um, I have, I hate to admit, um, killed some thermistors on some hot ends. Um, I think by plugging them into the wrong uh, port on a board is usually how it's done. I've never like um, had a problem soldering them and, and blowing out the thermistor or anything like that, but I have killed a couple thermistors. Uh, so being able to swap them out is really, really nice. Uh, what wattage is the printer power supply? It is uh, 200 watts. So it is a more soon 200 watt, and that is beyond spec. So the Voron spec is 150 watts. So they definitely included a higher wattage um, bed in order to be able to account for the, um, excuse me, higher wattage power supply in order to be able to account for the higher wattage bed. So yeah, I'm looking forward to these heat up times being a lot quicker. Right now, you know, it's a passively heated chamber. You don't need to heat your V0 chamber super um, hot, but if I'm going to print something that's gonna take up pretty much the entire 120 by 120 by 120, and it's gonna be a lot of plastic, I do usually try to heat soak my chamber a little while. So having a more powerful bed Maybe having a Nevermore in there and a bed that can heat up and, you know, um, just is more powerful should be a pretty good uh, thing to have. Uh, then we've got our magnet and our double-sided sheets. So that's a little bit different than the FormBot kit. The FormBot kit had a smooth um, PEI sheet on one side and then textured on the other. This has got double textured. It's got that gold kind of bronzy, uh, PEI look to it, and this is pretty standard. I didn't like it, I'll, I'll admit, all of my PEI sheets on my other printers initially were smooth, just because I liked the smooth surface, but ever since getting into Voron stuff, this seems to be the most popular, and it's grown on me a whole lot. So, um, yeah, I kind of like it. I've done some client work where the guy wanted it smooth, and I was like, let me print one smooth and one textured for you. And he's like, oh, it kind of looks like a, a better finished part when it's textured. Kind of like it's, I don't know, some kind of a finish on an injection molded part. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you don't see any print lines and it looks really nice. So um, 3M magnetic bed. Um, it's got 300 S, uh, 300 LSE type adhesive. Um, the adhesive and the type of magnet that are included on these is actually important. Um, a lot of adhesives are only rated to certain temperatures and a lot of magnets um, can only go through a certain number of cycles. They have Curie ratings. So you do wanna make sure that it's a high quality um, bed. I do notice on the FormBot kit that if I have like a square part that's taking up this whole thing, sometimes the bed will actually lift a little bit in the edges, in the corners. It'll lift away from the magnet just from all that heat, the way I've solved it is just to heat soak my um, uh, chamber a lot longer and that kind of helps it kind of stay flatter. But yeah, uh, maybe this ma magnet quality is a little bit better. Uh, I had two sheets in my LDL kit. Jason, where's my sheet? Um, 
I think according to the to the bomb, it, it's only supposed to have one sheet, so I don't think I'm missing anything, but we'll find out. I'll, I'll double check later. 3D experiments, hello, welcome. I'd switch over to uh, Gorlite beds for all my printers. Uh, as the, um, the print bed surface, Gorlite is like a um, like PCB type material, right? Uh, the texture plate hides first layer imperfections a lot better than smoother glass. I've definitely noticed that as well. Um, you can get a little bit more of a glossy surface if you get the right the right smush um, with you know a, a smooth PI sheet or glass, but um, it's much easier to just kind of hide it with the the textured. We are on the last box of the first box, and it is the Pico Bilical kit. Uh, correct PCB board. Gotcha. So this is the Pico Bilical. It is essentially a smart uh, V0 umbilical. So the V0 umbilical is a frame PCB that goes at the top of the frame. And then there's a tool head PCB and then a wire that goes between them, a wiring loom. And as the PCB you know, print head moves around, you maintain a connection and it just breaks out all the wiring to the tool head to make it easier. This is essentially a smart version of that. So there's an actual MCU on the frame PCB that when you set up things in Clipper, you don't say it's your Sermister port on your main board, you say it's the Sermister port on your Pico Bilical, if that makes sense. So it actually saves you some IO, I believe, on your Pico Bilical, or excuse me, on your SKR Pico. Maybe that's why this is called a Pico Bilical. No, it's because it has an actual Pico on the board. So we've got tool head, PCB, very similar to the, if I can get it open, very similar to the uh, V0 umbilical, which was originally made by Timmit, I believe. Super smart guy, half the V0 mods, I feel like were made by Timmit. The other half of Boron mods were made by like Heart K. I won't say that, there's a lot of really smart guys um, on the Voron team who make a lot of really cool mods that end up becoming pretty ubiquitous. But Heart K and Timmit, I feel like are really good at it. So this is the Molex connector where all the cables come out. We've got, I think that is for the ADXL right there. Um, print cooling fan, motor, and then that's the uh, hot end connector. And then just everything, the X end stop isn't gonna be used. So that's where people, if they want to use um, sequence on their uh, tool head, then they can usually use this, uh, this X end stop port, which is kind of nice. So that's one PCB. We have what looks like the power PCB for the, uh, gotta cut that guy open too. I uh, gotta love all of LDO's refinements, definitely top quality stuff. So yeah, that's what I'm, I'm noticing. Um, it's a more expensive kit, but if I were to add up all the stuff I'm mentioning, um, not even the time saving things, but the fact that you get this Pico Bilical, I imagine this has gotta be, it's an extra MCU, it's cables, it's um, you know time and refinement of design and all that kind of stuff. I, I guess it would be like a 25 to $40 value. Um, the Boron Revo with two nozzles, that's like a hundred and something dollar value. Uh, the LDO motors are arguably better quality. The extrusions are better quality. Um, I think you can make a case that if you broke things down itemized and looked at all the feature ads for the um, LDO kit versus many of the other kits on the market, you could easily justify the cost. You add into that the um, customer service, the community-based kind of community-oriented, you know, um, aspects of Jason and LDO and I think you could easily make an argument that the increased, increased price of the kit is worth it. I just said that like three times, but it's getting a little late. Um, so this is a breakout board which goes on the Pi, which I think provides it power. Um, I'm not sure if it goes down from 24 volts to five or what, but um, it also breaks out some of the other GPIO stuff that you need. It will cover 
most of the GPIO. So that could be a problem if you say wanted to run a PWI, a PWM fan or something like that, then it looks like all the GPIO for the Pi is covered up. But um, I assume that most Voron guys are probably not doing that. I believe there's also a, th um, there's an ADXL on here, but there's also, I think, a, a thermistor on here as well. So you can get chamber temps right at the tool head, which is, you know, another thing. Like that's something that you might have to, to buy extra on your kit. Uh, lots of little parts. We've got the main frame PCB. Hey, there is a tiny jumper in here. There is a tiny little SMD fuse in here. Come on, focus. I'm not sure if that's it. I guess that's an extra fuse for the one that goes right here. Um, but this is the frame PCB and you can see there's a lot more electronics on it than the typical um, umbilical. Let me see. Here is a V0 umbilical PCB uh, that I bought extra from, from Formbot next to a Pico umbilical frame PCB. And you can see that this is essentially, uh, this is essentially, we'll say this is a smart version of this guy, basically. So this is just designed to break out all the IO. It makes wiring a V0 really, really easy. All of these go down to the frame PC, or excuse me, to the main board. And then this goes up to the tool head and it uh, you know, makes wiring super, super dead easy. This is that, but it also has a ton of extra functionality on it, including giving you back some of the Pico Bilical um, or SKR Pico's IO. So um, yeah, another big enhancement. Now what else is in the box? Uh, we've got hardware. We've got like a nice little metal standoff um, for the tool head. If you guys recall that portion of the build, all the fasteners that you need. I won't go into like every single one of these. I'm just trying to see if there's anything special on here. Uh, threaded inserts, that's about it. And then finally we have the wiring kit for the Pico Bilical. All the cables that you need. Of course, just like everything else, it's pre-cut to length, pre-crimped got the right term, um, terminals on here. So 24 volts to the umbilical. Um, got a pretty nice uh, Molex terminated wire. So one part is on the print head, moves around. The other part's on the frame PCB. It stays static. Got another wire, five volts to the Raspberry Pi. And then we've got the extruder stepper motor. Um, so it, they have a wiring diagram that you know makes it easy to, to wire, but when things are labeled like this, it's almost like superfluous. I won't say that. It's probably really, really helpful, but it feels like when you have everything labeled really, really well, you don't necessarily even need a wiring diagram. Um, USB-C cable to program the Pico Bilical and this little ribbon cable, I assume for the ADXL. Um, most people would tend to just stick this on when they want to do their input shaping and then take it off when they don't need it. Um, so everything for the Pico Bilical kit, which is a nice feature add. And one of the things that sets apart this kit from others, um, there are other kits that are starting to do similar stuff. The, uh, what is it called? Just stop saying, uh, also. The Fisec kit has a catalyst board, if you guys have seen that. And it is a dual um, chip board. So it has the main board, but it also has a single board computer on it. But what really makes it unique is that it is designed specifically for their V0 kit. So they've rearranged all of the IO on the board so that like the AB motors are up top, the ports for the AB motors are up top. So you have a very short run from the AB motors into it. And that's the first thing, I, first time I've seen that, you know, obviously some custom printers are probably gonna have custom boards where they're, you know, arranging stuff to make it, um, you know, optimal for that printer. But that's the first boron kit that I've seen that has a custom board specifically designed for a custom printer. Kind of unique. Um, it has a similar tool head setup that breaks straight out of the board. 
into the, um, the print head, which is also kind of unique. So some folks taking some of the um, ideas from, from LDL and building on it, whether or not it's better, I'm not sure, but uh, it's interesting to see how things evolve as LDL has kind of set the standard and everybody else is trying to catch up. So this will be some extra stuff from Matter Hackers that they sent along, as well as um, the upgrade kit for the V0.2. And I used to work at a grocery store and I had to break down boxes a lot. So I like to use just about anything around me to uh, open and break down boxes. So you'll see me reach for any tool that I can grab. I got another warning. I hope the stream's still going okay. It says my bit rate is too high. Turn it like this. Let me see if there's a packing sheet or anything that might have my name in it. No. Don't see it. All right. We have the V0.2 upgrade kit. So the V0.2 S1 Voron V Voron 0.2 3D printer upgrade kit. Um, I had some issues, but the stream is still going. Okay. I followed a guide that said that you can just up your bit rate and start streaming at 1440p and it really improves the stream quality, but it seems I need to play with those settings quite a bit more. Um, so we have that, and then we have a Matter Hacker shirt. So I'll, I have a shirt that I can wear in the next stream um, for the start of the build. Rep Matter Hackers. Thank you, Matter Hackers, for not sponsoring the stream or build, but providing the kit. Um, just something I want to get across is this is not sponsored, and there's no money exchanged. They just wanted to let people know that they provide these kits. And they seem to be a pretty good option from what I can see to um, pick one up. Swag, sweet. All right, so that's a, a thing I've noticed is that they've got kind of like a mini bomb inside of every box, um, which is you know helpful for you to immediately be able to see what's in the box. I can imagine that building this, you're gonna be grabbing boxes, going through them, trying to figure out what's in what box. So having this kind of broken out here seems really, really useful. Okay, so immediately we have something I noted. Um, this has an extra 3010 axial fan. I assume that that is for like the MCU or something and it will replace the 3006, 30-06 fan that was in uh, the other kit. We have all of our top hat extrusions. So there are four of the, what is this, 200 millimeter long extrusions for the electronic space, thanks to Finch. Um, we have our four uh, top hat extrusions, which are 200 millimeters long, and then four which are 100 millimeters long. Um, if you get a colored frame kit, one thing that you might want to note is that your extrusions for the top hat might not perfectly match your extrusions for the main part of the frame, particularly if you buy the upgrade kit. So if you already had a red or green or whatever blue color LDL kit, and then you buy an upgrade kit, the extrusion kind of color might not match perfectly. I've heard some people mention that. And then I've also heard that you kind of want to keep these separate and not get these mixed up with any of the other frame kits uh, or frame extrusions because there could be a very slight, you know, half a millimeter difference in the cut. Um, it's not like they're cut unsquare, but I think it was uh, Chris's living room workshop. He accidentally swapped in one of these extrusions for the other, um, you know, other part of their kit because they were identical and he thought it caused some unsquareness in terms of his frame. So uh, that's something to note. So we'll keep these like a little bit separate, uh, but otherwise they're pretty much identical in terms of the profile to the other extrusion. And you can kind of see that like, uh, uh. are you no focus? There we go. You can see that D shape to their extrusion that makes it a lot different than the typical maker beam, which is like a T shape extrusion. 
But this is what allows the slide in nuts to slide in. You put them in at a 45 degree angle and then they have kind of like a, a chamfer on them which allows them to slot in. Hashtag not sponsored. Uh, why aren't you scrolling? Um, the Finch said, uh, my space gray colors were almost dead on. That's really good to see. Uh, was that like within one kit? I imagine when they're within one kit, that's a lot easier for them to color match. But I have had some people, somebody posted in the V0 forum uh, or channel and they noted that their orange ones were pretty like different. But I think that that's kind of to be expected. Um, not that it matters in this size, but I bet those extrusions are lighter as well. I know Masumi has um, regular and lightweight extrusions. That's probably true. Um, for my, um, I guess, can I show that somehow? My, my sim racing kit, it's a little bit of a mess because I'm borrowing some of the stuff for the stream right now. So if I go to scan. Um, you guys can see that in the background. So there's a base on the floor. Oh, it's a complete mess over there. Don't pay attention. Um, there's the base on the floor, which has a seat on it. And then there's a monitor frame that goes up and around. But um, yeah, when I was buying the extrusions, they, they had three different sizes. They had standard, which was one weight. They had lightweight, which was less total aluminum. And then they had like super lightweight. And of course they had like ratings and all that kind of stuff for what they were good for and how much weight they could hold. Um, but most people tended to go for the lightweight because it's less material and it costs less to ship. Every like kilogram that something costs to ship adds like a whole bunch more to the price. So people tended to go for the lightest stuff possible, knowing that the most they needed to support was like their own weight. Uh, that was over a year apart and the colors matched really, really well. That's great to see. So maybe that was uh, a little bit foreboding unnecessarily. But I will set these aside to make sure that um, I don't get them mixed up with any of the other extrusions. Let's go back to... We've got some more hardware. This is just essentially some nuts, some plastic tap screws, and yeah, everything's kind of listed there, so nothing special. If it's not a complete mess, are you really working? Yeah, classic YouTuber, like clean in the front, everything behind me is an absolute, like crazy mess. Assemble the top hat first, that way you don't have to worry about mixing up. Smart. This is why I don't pay you guys <laughs> to give me better ideas and help me with my build. So, here are our panels. Oops. So, I did have a question about whether the bottom panel was going to be different. Uh, the bottom deck, excuse me, and it looks like it is. I can't find the start of this. Somewhere there's a seam, and if I can find it, it'll open up really easily and I won't have to shred everything apart, but you know what? We're doing it live. Um, so this is a replacement bottom deck, and as I noted, I don't think I can yeah, I do have the other one. So this is the original, and this is the new one for the V0.2. And you can see that the main difference is that the cutout is in a different spot for the chain to go down through. So uh, that's something to note. Make sure you use the, the right one. V0.1, it's in the corner. V0.2, it's kind of in the middle. We have our top hat 
panels, the top and the four sides, which are all pretty much the same. Again, labeled though, so that's kind of nice. If you have these put aside somewhere, you can quickly identify them. And then the bottom panel, which is essentially just a big old square, is uh, apparently different. Not sure what's different about it. I didn't really notice any differences, but yeah. So that is the upgrade kit. Um, one thing to note, this is not the newest, newest revision. So it does not have the B0.2R1 changes, which as far as I know is just the filament runout sensor. Um, but I'm planning on doing a something different with the filament runout sensor. If you guys saw my FormBot build, I did the um, Orbiter filament sensor mod where I basically put it on the foot of my printer um, where the normal filament runout sensor went. I put the LDO Orbiter filament runout sensor. So it's a smart runout sensor. It has an LED on it that shows green or red depending on the filaments loaded. And then it uses like G-code macros in order to be able to uh, unload and unload filament and has a little button. So I'm gonna do something similar. I think I'm gonna put it as an Irby though, the upper rear Bowden inlet that Maker Leaf Makers made. I think I'm gonna, I've already started working on it. Actually, I have it somewhere. And here it is. So this is the Irby that um, Maker Leaf Makers uh, made. So basically instead of the filaments running it through the foot and up through the back of the printer and up and over, you flip the filament around so that it feeds to the upper back portion of the V0.2 and it's just a shorter path up to the tool head. It doesn't have to go through the back of your machine or anything. And I have devised a way to take the orbiter filament runout sensor and you basically put it on the back there so the filament will come in here there's actually a little plastic see-through ring which will show up as red or green if there's filament loaded or not and then there's also a filament unload button so imagine this on the back of the printer little inconvenient you're gonna have to reach around there to press the button but um it's a shorter path for the filament to run into and people really seem to like the um irby so i figured i'd kind of do a mod and here you can see kind of how the electronics go in there i need to finish it up and find a good way for it to kind of get screwed down um so that it won't move but other than that it's it's pretty much finished so this is a fun little project uh the print quality is not great because i've just been like rapid prototyping it, but yeah, that's what I plan on doing. Gonna have to reprint it in the appropriate colors. And yeah, so we won't be using the stock filament runout sensor anyway. That's kind of the only mod mod that's gonna go on it like from the very beginning. Um, what else can or should we do? Uh, everything's unboxed, it's a complete mess and I'm gonna have to reorganize it probably over on my side table. Um, Let's talk about the rest of the plan for the build um, or the printed parts. Let's talk about the printed parts. So as you can see, the main color is kind of this army green from uh, Polymaker. I'm I thought it kind of matched the aesthetic of Master Chief's armor a fair bit. I originally picked a different green that they had and it was a little bit too kind of foresty green. So the idea is that with the black frame, it will kind of be like some of the under parts of Master Chief's uh, armor. And then the main kind of plates of armor are all gonna be green. And then I've got some light and dark gray parts that will are kind of just made to be little um accents and they're all the galaxy black so they have like a nice little shimmer to them so that's the plain plan i've been playing with kind of different color combinations i can do for different parts of it so this is like one of the ab motor mounts and i kind of printed out a bunch of extra different variants of it so i could do all green with it if i wanted to oops this goes on that way I could do green and black. First part dropped of the build. I need to have like a 
a part drop counter. Um, so we've got the, the gold, the green, the black, and for a lot of the AB motor parts and the carriage parts, I've kind of printed all the parts in all the different colors. So we can kind of play with them and decide which ones will look best together. If that makes sense. So I don't know, the primary color is gonna be the green. I was worried about there being too much green and it may be kind of looking not that nice. So printed about, I don't know, three different versions of some of these parts. Um, here is the tool head, and this is what I'm thinking for it. So the main cowling and cooler in green, then like a black highlight there, the back of it in green. This kind of reminds me of Master Chief's helmet, and then some of the inner parts in like a light gray. So um, yeah, I'm trying to, you know, match some of the stylings of some of the other guys building printers, and they have much better eyes for color, I think, um, than I do. So we're going to play around with it. Um, I did order one of these guys. This is the CNC carriage from Fabrico. Um, I started out my Formbot build using just a printed part and it was printed by Piff and looked like really, really good quality. But the way, instead of having CNC screw holes here with taps, um, holes, it had nuts that you slipped in and the nuts started spinning inside of the printed part for me. So I ended up ordering one of these for my Formbot kit and I figured I'd order two and I think I'm just gonna go with this from the very beginning. I think it's like nine bucks. Um, you know, whether it's necessary for everybody, I'm not sure, but I just like the idea of having one solid part here that's not printed and um, it just felt after building it once and needing to replace it, it felt like it was probably the smart way to go. Andre, colors, I like the color choices, thank you. Colors came out great. Um, I will be asking you guys, you know, like as we build this, what color combination do you think would work the best since we have so many kind of variations? Maybe I'll like develop some polls so you guys can chime in and say, you know, what you, you feel would be the best. I won't 100%, you know, guarantee to uh, to take the advice. I, I hold final say, but I will kind of consider it. But I think, did I say, oh yeah, sorry, that's from Fabrico, it's their Honey Badger line. Thanks for chiming in there, Chuggy. I like it when you guys answer each other's questions before I can even get to it. Thank you for doing that, I encourage it. We'll wait till it's all assembled and tell you the color combo is wrong. That sounds about right. I'll, that's probably what I'll be thinking in my head anyways. Um, but it's gonna be primarily green. I was a little worried about it not looking all that great, but I think it's gonna be okay. Only thing I'm a little worried about are the mesh skirts. I went with gold for the mesh. And I'm not sure it's gonna, I think they look okay. I was a little bit worried about the green and the gold looking a little muddy, um, but I, I think it looks kind of cool, but I think I might want to reprint these with black meshes. Um, let me know what you guys think about that. I think it would just kind of look a little bit more military -y, um, or tactical with black mesh instead of the, the gold. I'm not sure though. I'm doing the stealth skirts on yours. I think I will probably switch to those, but I didn't know if you could do the stealth skirts with a, you know, kind of quote unquote stock bomb. Um, I think the black mesh might work better. Yeah, I might reprint them and just have both of them. And uh, I'll, I'll decide, or dark gray. Yeah, so this is the, the dark gray quote unquote, and it's actually fairly, I was surprised how kind of light it looks next to anything. That's actually kind of black. Um, it's almost all ABS except for the green is ASA and it's all polymiker. So I actually had them all out before at the beginning of the stream. Here are the colors used. Um, ignore that this is says PLA. Um, I got a galaxy black in PLA and in ABS. So the printed parts are actually in the ABS, but that kind of gives you an idea of the three different colors. Um, if people are interested, I don't have a um, affiliate with Polymaker, I don't think, but I can leave a link to all the different colors used if you guys like.
Yeah, that was kind of the inspiration. I wanted to do something a little bit cooler than just black in one color. Um, so that, that's kind of the thinking behind the color scheme. Uh, the only extra are the two 30 by 10, 35 by 10 fans. Okay, gotcha. I love Polymaker Galaxy ASA colors. Yeah, their Galaxy stuff is good. I've heard that it's still not available in Europe for some reason. Um, I'm not sure if it's like a um, material data safety sheet type thing or if it's like regulatory, but um, I know a lot of people in Europe are like, we really want the Galaxy colors and they can't get them yet. So that's a little disappointing. Um, so yeah, that's the plan for the parts. I was thinking of doing, let me know what you guys think of this. So according to the kind of, oh, that camera's frozen. Can I get it back? Uh-oh, the stream's still up, right? I think it's just the camera. Well, we'll go to base cam. Oh, I don't like my face being this big on screen. Um, so according to the Voron instructions, you typically build the printer and do the electronics like the very last thing, right? And I help out a lot in the Gosh, that's too dark. It looks like, a, well, whatever. I help out a lot in the Voron um, Discord and there's a lot of people who have problems with their electronics at the end. And one of the things that makes it really hard to troubleshoot is all the electronics are on the printer. And when you say, hey, can you hook the Pi up to a keyboard and a monitor? They're like, no, because it's inside the printer. Or when you say, hey, can you just plug it into an ethernet port? They're like, well, it's downstairs in my basement and I only have Wi-Fi down there. So um, what I was thinking was showing people that you can basically bench build your electronics before you do the rest of the printer to A, make sure that your fans are all working, to make sure that your boards are all working, get the Raspberry Pi flashed so that you can walk it over to your router, plug it in, SSH to it and set up Wi-Fi that way. You can, um, you know, get your MCUs flashed while they're not on the printer. So I was gonna maybe make a video about that because I just noticed that, I don't know, it feels like sometimes three out of 10 people who have problems with their, their Voron builds or their V0 builds are having problems with like flashing um, clipper to the boards or getting um, their their uh, Pi to show up on Wi-Fi. So um, Yeah, that was my thought. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it I thought that, that could be kind of a, a unique part of the stream to show How people can get around that problem? Um, I have a bench test stand to set up all the printer electronics before I put it in the printer. I think it's pretty useful um, the worst thing in the world is building a complete printer. It's almost like building a computer, a PC, and you get everything in and you turn it on and you have to troubleshoot to find out that your RAM sticks are broken or your gosh forbid your CPU is dead on arrival. So I typically, when I'm building a new computer from scratch, I'm not sure if you guys can see, I've got a mod mat here underneath all of this stuff. I used to be really into building PCs. I still kind of am but I would build everything outside of the case. Just make sure it posts, turns on. I know that the CPU works, the motherboard works, the RAM works, and the cooler is working. And then I put everything inside of the case. So, I don't know, I thought I'd run that by people, see if they thought it was useful. Uh, that is useful, especially if you build more than one thing, true. Um, I've also got like a bench power supply, and I've got a set of leads that come out of it that have JST connectors on the end of it, like female JSTs in both polarities so that I can test my fans on there um, before I, you know, get the whole thing built and plug in a fan and either put it in backwards and fry it or find out that the fan doesn't work. Um, yeah, these are just like some things that I kind of do sometimes when I'm building things and I thought maybe I could kind of share it to the world and 
let people pick of it, you know, what they want and see if they, uh, they like it. And, and if they like it, they can use it. And if they don't, they don't have to, obviously. I'm gonna stop recording the unboxing cam. But uh, yeah, I think that's it in terms of like the, the bulk of the stream. Um, we can hang out and chat for a little bit. I wish that the main camera, which is like my highest quality camera was still working. But um, yeah, we're gonna plan on using this guy somewhere. Uh, we've got the cool kind of colorful printed, printed parts. Um, I did talk about Matter Hackers refills at the beginning of the stream. I love these. The first printer company or filament company I started using them from was actually Inland. And I still print with some of their filament. Um, I've heard that some of their ABS might be printed or produced by Polymaker, but I don't know if that's true or not. But um, yeah, I love that they have refills now. You can basically get a printed spool either from Matter Hackers or print it yourself and just pop these on. And then when you're done, you don't have to worry about what do I, how am I gonna use this spool which a lot of people say they like use their spools for stuff. I, I don't, I, I've made one of those little tool holders or small parts holders and that's about it. But where's my mouse? There we go. Uh, gotta, gotta work tomorrow. Thanks for the stream. I'm looking forward to the build start. Have a great night. Thank you for hopping in the stream. Thank you for chatting. Thanks for the suggestions um, for like building the top hat first and stuff like that. That's a really good idea. But uh, glad you enjoyed the stream and I will see you later. Uh, Renovic, I think the Inland Sparkle ABS is from Parley Maker. It's uh, since it's so similar, their, their spools are really, really similar too. Um, I mean, I guess everybody's starting to use a cardboard spool, but when I saw it, I was like, hmm, is that pretty similar to Parley Maker? Eh, maybe a little bit different. This feels like a lot more waxy than this one, but who knows? I am glad to see mostly cardboard spools because they're a lot more easily either disposable or recyclable. I mean, you could use those in your <laughs> in your bonfire if you wanted to, and then also the the refills are a good idea. I, during COVID, I was printing so much PPE for like the hospitals and, and caretakers and um, medical workers around here. I had a stack of empty spools like that high. And I just kept putting it into a corner, into a corner, trying to think of like, what can I do with these? And um, I can't think of anything else, but uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and call it. Um, thank you for everybody who tuned in. Um, I'm really looking forward to this build. It's going to be really interesting to see having already built a V0, a V0.2, um, how fast this goes. So I'm not going to try to judge this kit versus the other kit in terms of like, oh, this kit was much easier to build because I'm not at the same like knowledge level, if that makes sense. I'm going to try to judge it based on its merits or the, um, the kind of quality of life improvements, like which ones are they and are they worth it? Are the um, added in kind of value adds, are they again worth it? Some people might not want a $140 Voron Revo because they plan on putting a Rapido or something like that in there. So that's gonna be for everybody else to judge, but I'm gonna you know build this with you guys. Hopefully it'll go a whole lot faster and uh, give my feedback and then we'll have a final review at the very end of it. So um, that is it for the stream. Thank you guys for tuning in. I will let you know, I can't really set a straight, you know, a set, a set date for when I'll do the streams just because my schedule is so busy, but I will try to post at least a day ahead of time if I can, if not several hours, and then I will post it around on all of the kind of um, self-promotion who's streaming Discord channels. So thank you guys. I will see you in the next one. Peace.